Good morning and a warm welcome to the ODPP Cafe. My name is Anita Onuko, your host for the show. This is a show brought to you by the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution. We are live on Facebook. We are also on YouTube and on Twitter. On Facebook, we are at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution. Uh, on YouTube, we are also at the Office of the Director of Public Prosecution. And on Twitter, we are at ODPP underscore KE. We welcome you to join us uh, in the, on the show. Uh, invite your friends to watch. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter and Facebook. So uh, this show is out to is 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 aimed at uh, empowering you. It's aimed at uh, uh, teaching you some aspects of the criminal justice system. We look forward to learning a lot about what the law says about certain aspects of of of, of our life because it impacts our day to day life. The show is out to empower you. I get empowered every other show. And I think today is our 27th episode, I'm not sure. We've been doing good, we've been learning a lot, and we keep learning every day. So today we're going to talk about money laundering, anti-money money laundering, and I have guests on the show. But before we start the show, I want to just give you a quick sneak into the courts. And these are just the, the things that have been um, happening in the courts this week. It's been quite eventful, as you know. Uh, I'm just going to remind you rather to just uh, show you what has been happening. There's been some wins in, uh, in the fight against corruption. And uh, you remember that like, the first case I have on the screen is the Kemri MD, uh, Dr. David Koech, who was found guilty of fraudulent acquisition of public property and fined 19.6 million after the prosecution proved beyond reasonable doubt that Koech committed the offense. Uh, he was accused of transferring 19.3 million from Kemri, Kemri's bank's accounts to his personal accounts when he was MD. He was doing this to finance his children and children's education abroad. The funds had been allocated for the center in Kisumu. So uh, Koech will serve six years in jail if he fails to pay the fine. Uh, but just like as you saw on social, there was an uproar on this and uh, the ODP is dissatisfied with this and will be seeking enhancement of the same at the high court. So that was Dr. David Koech, the former Kemri MD. Uh, the next case is on Wario and Soy, the the Rio uh, the Rio the Rio duo the duo from Rio the duo the Rio duo yeah. So former sports CS Hassan Wario was sentenced to pay three point six million fine in default, uh, served six years jail term after being convicted convicted of three counts of abuse of office. Uh, this was after the prosecution proved its case beyond reasonable doubt. His co-accused, the former NOC official Stephen Soy was also found uh, guilty of abuse of office and willful failure to comply with the law relating to management of public funds. He was fined 105 million or to serve 12 years in prison uh, should he default that. So this also caused quite a story yesterday and the days before about the sentencing of these two. So our Rio was convicted of abusing his office by improperly conferring benefits to three people in delegation, the delegation that traveled to Rio in July 2016. You remember this story that was, I think, first aired by Citizen uh, TV. Evidence tabled in court by the 22 prosecution witnesses showed that Mr. Soy, now the co-accused, being the head of the team in the Olympics game, um, unlawfully approved payment in excess of $151,500 as allowances to the members of the team. So he's also authorized, he also authorized the cancellation of air tickets uh, resulting in a loss of 9.7 million public funds. A lot of money there. So uh, the next story is about the Solai Dam hearing. It started this week. Uh, the prosecution's first and second witnesses testified in court in the Solai Dam case. Uh, the first witness was a 56-year-old man who was a security officer at Solai Farm for 15 years. He reported two leakages on lower side of the dam to his supervisor. Uh, the second witness, also a security officer at Solai Farm for four years, told the court that he had noticed a crack from top to bottom of the dam's wall and that the walls were shaky. He reported to his supervisor, uh, and I think that is uh, the, 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 what is it called, his uh, witness. So the Solai farm owner Perry Manusk, Manusuk and eight others were charged with 48 counts of manslaughter and failing to prepare an environmental impact assessment report. Also charged in the case are the farm's general manager, Vinod Kumar, Nakuru County Water Director, Johnson Juguna, others who are Water Resources Authority and National Environmental Environment Management Authority officers, Luca Kipiegen, Winnie Modoni, Jacinta Were. 
Tomkin Odiambo, William Wondi, and Lynette Cheruyot. Uh, remember the Solai Dam. People have been asking when it's going to start, and it's now started. It's ongoing, and we will update you as we go along. The other case, again, that uh, caused a lot of discussion on social or conversation was about Joey Irungu. Uh, Joey, uh, the ODPP made an application seeking to have the court cancel his bond and place him at the industrial area remand prison until his murder case is concluded. This is because he violated the bail conditions issued by Justice James Wakiaga last year. We talked about bail and bonds and we said that with these rights, because you have the right to bail and bond, but with right comes responsibility. So in an affidavit sworn by Chief Inspector Otieno, the prosecution said Joey got into a fight at Club 1824 in March this year while out on bail. So he violated the conditions of his bail and bond. And the DPP is seeking to have this uh, revoked and he's taken to the pre to industrial area to await his trial. The prosecution accuses Joey of violating court orders by moving and residing within Langata which was the secondary crime scene and the locality of the potential witnesses who are yet to testify. So the court will deliver the ruling for the application on 28th uh, September 2021, when it will be determined whether Joey's bond will be cancelled or not. So the other case is about Laikipia. Uh, the TRT MP William Kamket was released on 1 million bond with a surety of a similar amount or an alternative cash bill of 800,000. Uh, the court granted Mr. Kamket freedom and issued orders restraining him from uh, from intimidating or contacting witnesses identified by the, by the police, as well as discussing or making statements relating to the matter pending hearing and determination of the case. You've seen what's happening in Laikipia, uh, a lot of death and destruction uh, because of uh, this uh, incitement. So earlier, the prosecution through State Councillor Lois Memo had submitted that on July 16th at Tahiti in Baringo, Kamket during a meeting unlawfully and willfully uttered words with the intention to promote ethnic profiling designed to undermine the authority of the government in the area. The MP had denied the charges and through his lawyer, Kip Koech Nietzsche, pleaded with the court to grant him bond. The case will be mentioned on 4th of October. As we pray of definitely for peace in Laikipia. So that's, that is what has been at the courts this week. And um, a lot of it is still um, eliciting a lot of discussion on social media. But today and most of this week, our discussion from ODPP has been about money laundering. And that is what we want to discuss today. As always, we post on Twitter, just giving you a bit of an overview about the topic. Like this week, we gave you an overview about money laundering. We posted on Facebook as well. So we engage you to engage. And thank you so much for engaging those who have, who have engaged. And if you want to keep on with the conversation, just keep engaging with us on the comment section. People are reading, experts are reading, and definitely they'll get in touch with you. So money laundering. Uh, I think a few weeks ago, we got the surprise of our lives. We were served tea, and the tea was about wash wash. And so people were talking about uh, money and get rich quick, those get rich quick get rich quick schemes that we've seen around. You see uh, your former classmate, one minute you just be at high school, the next minute he's driving a huge V8 and he'll just tell you he started his business uh, with uh, maybe uh, one, one, one what, uh, a butchery and then now he has a series of butchery or he started with a small <laughs> retail shop and now he owns a chain of supermarkets. You don't know how that happened. And sometimes you get lured into this because of course we live in a, in a world of instant things, instant coffee, instant money and quick gratification of whatever it is you want to do. So we want to discuss money laundering because definitely it is illegal. And with me, I have two guests and I want, to, I want them to introduce themselves as always and we get to know exactly how they deal with money laundering. So I'll start with the lady, ladies first. Karim Tanai, maybe and introduce yourself. Thank you, Anita. My name is Kesho MEB. I'm a prosecution counsel and I work at the economic organized and international crimes department oh Karibu -san. thank you we've talked about transnational and organized crime on the show we've talked about counter-terrorism yes. and i think uh, that last time in arusha we talked about how this crosses borders of course now the reality of the transnational and organized crime yes. and definitely we're glad to have you on the show to talk about money laundering thank you yes Karibu -san, mr james please introduce yourself so thank you anita and good morning everyone so my name is james manyange the Director, Legal Compliance and External Relations at the Financial Reporting Center. Mm -hmm. yes. to the show. Like I was telling you earlier, I think I'm one of those people who didn't know that FRC exists. 
Mm. So for the sake of the show, just going to say FRC. Okay. Yeah. So carry on to the show, and because we're the visitor, we'll start with you. Just tell us who, what FRC does first of all, and and what is your mandate. Okay. Yes. Thanks. So FRC, as, as uh, you said, is uh, short for Financial Reporting Center. Financial Reporting Center. We are a, a government institution. We are uh, administratively under the National uh, Treasury and Planning. Uh, and uh, we established under uh, the Proceeds of Crime and anti Act of 2009. So our principal mandate is to um, help in combating money laundering, in financing, and also tracing proceeds of crime. So um, all criminal activities um, generate uh, proceeds. So we then, uh, as an institution, help other um, law enforcement or investigative agencies in terms of tracing uh, where mm -hmm. those proceeds of crime have come from, so that you can then be able to then curb uh, criminal activities, uh, and then also specifically curb money laundering and also trusting financing. Okay. And then uh, the other uh, mandate we have is to share information with um, agencies, be it law enforcement, be it um, our regulatory bodies or other of another agency. Mm. And the aim of sharing information is to uh, enable uh, administration of the laws of the country. Okay. Uh, the information which we which we share is what we call financial intelligence. Mm. Yeah, so we um, get information from various sources, from bodies, uh, reporting institutions, things like banks, um, um, accountant firms, um, forex bureaus, um, real estate dealers, and then we piece together information. And the information which we piece together is really trying to look at the financial transactions in as they relate to criminality. Okay. And then we try to also ensure that mm -hmm. um, um, as a country, we are compliant with the international obligations. Okay. So in a nutshell. That is what you do. I just wanted to ask uh, how you work in the, where do you fall in the, in the justice system? Are you at the investigative stage? So how do you relate with the, with the ODPP? Very good question, um, Anita, and thank you for that. Yeah. Now, in the criminal justice system, mm -hmm. um, um, let me first of all just give a bit of background. Yeah. The Financial Reporting Center is what you'd call a financial intelligence unit. Mm -hmm. uh, across the globe, you'll, you'll, uh, most of our sister institutions are either called financial intelligence agencies, financial intelligence units, as is called a financial reporting center. Mm -hmm. Now, in the criminal justice system, as I said, our work then is then to try and ensure the investigative bodies um, get um, um, information on financial transactions which can help them with the investigation. Mm -hmm. Why financial transactions? So when you look at traditionally, um, law enforcement um, are concentrated on um, um, pursuing the criminal activity. So if it was, for example, um, drug trafficking, you'd pursue the people who are involved in drug trafficking and the offense itself. Yeah. Um, but when, you, as I said, when you look at all this, or even if it's corruption, you just pursue um, the activity, the corruption, and the person involved. But where these criminal activities, they have generated some proceeds. Where have these proceeds gone to? So the aim of looking at proceeds is either to look at the whole criminal enterprise, either the people who are funding the criminal activity, or where these investments have gone, uh, uh, have been taken into, because. One of the aims of fighting a criminal uh, uh, in the criminal justice system is to move the, remove the profit from the crime. Yeah? One of the ways to remove the profit from the crime is to make sure that crime does not pay. Yeah? So that whenever then, uh, the proceeds are found, then you're able to seize those assets, forfeit them to the government, and have them return back. So then we come to then uh, assist law enforcement in tracing, particularly financial transactions where the proceeds have come. So if it was a case of corruption, if someone was involved in corruption, um, um, in, uh, other than the act itself, where have those in, uh, proceeds of corruption been invested into? Mm -hmm. So we help in tracing those proceeds of corruption, and then we share this information with the investigative, investigative, agency. investigative agencies, mm -hmm. so that now they will be pursuing the, the subject for the criminal activity, but also they'll be trying to see where have the proceeds of corruption been invested into? Where have they gone into? So that then 
those those proceeds can then be subject to forfeiture and then brought back to the yeah. state. I, yeah, I think because sometimes when you hear when you hear people talk, the public, mm. it's always about I mean, but pesa enough to cover generations and generations of his family. So you're saying you remove the joy from that? Yes. So our crime. our yeah. aim is to make sure that those that money which is supposed to sustain the generations can be gotten. Can, we can be able to trace it and have it brought back to the state mm. because it's the the, the money was not legitimately earned. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Wakesho, just uh, give us an overview of the ODPP mandate in as far as money laundering is concerned. And then, and, and even as you answer it, it's, I ask this question because we need to really make clear how the criminal justice system works. Because you find every time every people just throw in jobs at whichever institution that is available. Like somebody will just say, Bona Muja investigator in ODPP. So we just need to make it clear what is the mandate of the ODPP in as far as money laundering is concerned. For example. Okay, and as far as money, uh, money laundering is concerned, our, our job is to prosecute. So we will receive uh, files uh, from the investigative agencies and we'll, uh, we'll assess, we'll look at the files and we'll make a decision. Do we need to prosecute this case? Is there an adequate uh, evidence where we can sustain a, a conviction and then based on the on the on the evidence and uh, whether the, there's uh, there's uh, there's evidence and we also employ the public interest test then we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll decide this is a case we can take to court mm. so uh, for us it's to prosecute, to prosecute. yes yeah. but i think we also need to first uh, also uh, uh, First, address uh, the whole issue of what is. Uh, yeah, so the money. next question would be now. Money. I just wanted to talk about the money first, yeah. that you understand yeah. who is in that. Uh, we, 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 we exercise the prosecutorial power. Uh, yeah, so then, what is money, money laundering? Yes, maybe. What is money laundering? Uh, I think at, at start, maybe with the, where the term is said to, to, to have uh, originated mm. from, it is said to, uh, to, to have uh, originated from the American gangster. Um, Alphonse Capone. Did you know it's oh. called Alphonse? I didn't know it's called <laughs> Capone. It was called no, Alphonse. That's Al Capone. Yeah, that's Al Capone. Accused him with Alphonse. Yes, but I, I, I I mean, I'm <laughs> calling him Alphonse Capone. Yeah. yeah. But well, he said that because uh, he was a bootlegger mm -hmm. and uh, uh, he's he, he was also running a uh, laundry. What's a bootlegger? It's basically smuggling. Ah, okay. So uh, at the, the time he was running his bootlegging business and other criminal activities, he also also had a, a series of laundromats. So he was commingling, basically mixing the the the, 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 the legitimate funds of the of the laundromats with the oh, funds. Laundromat. Okay. Let's just say with the laundry. Let's just laundry say a laundry business. business. Yes. Okay. So he was mixing the funds of the laundry business with the funds from the uh, bootlegging okay. business okay. so that he evades taxes oh. so now mix those the, the money and then when when you don't you, you will not pay for, uh, the taxes for this yeah you know, selling alcohol yeah the, the smuggling business so that that's it, that's uh later it says that's mm. where the money laundering mm. term came mm. but uh it's also said that the, the term really gained the uh, currency during the watergate scandal mm. when it said the the the, the listening mm. devices were bought from uh, money that was laundered for Mexico. So some of the newspapers that started reporting in the 1970s say that uh, the, 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 the money that was used in the scandal was clean. It was dirty money that was laundered mm -hmm. from Mexico. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think in, in terms of uh, legal instruments, the first uh, instrument to address uh, money laundering and proceeds of crime is the Vienna Convention of 1988, and it was basically it was dealing with uh, drugs. Uh, and at that time, we see in the 80s there was a really uh, war on drugs, mm -hmm. and the UN Convention uh, came up, uh, UN Convention against illicit uh, traffic uh, in drugs came up, and so because the, there's lots of drugs. There's also lots of money, yeah. so that's when uh, the, the instrument addressed the issue of uh, drugs and also the, is the issue of uh, proceeds of crime and money laundering. Mm. So the other question is, what we watched, what we saw on social media the other day, wash wash. Is wash wash money laundering? 
Okay, uh, first I think I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, I realized I, I, I said the history without yes. defining money laundering. No, actually what is money laundering, yeah. Sorry, it's, uh, the, it's basically uh, a process where you uh, try and convert or conceal the proceeds of crime or illegally obtained funds. You try and uh, disguise um, the, the, the origin. Uh, of, uh, of, the, of these illegally obtained funds to, in a way that they look or they appear to have come from legitimate mm. sources. But in actual sense, that, well, let's just call it the dirty money, you actually, you, you make it look like it's come from le uh, a legitimate source, source. but it, 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 it did not come from a legitimate source. So money laundering is not fake money? It's not fake money. It's not fake money. I think uh, Mokesh has given a very good example. Mm. It's not a complicated thing. Mm. When you think of dirty clothes, mm. when Ningozak was in Chafu, you'd go, you wash them, they become clean. Mm. So the aim of uh, money laundering is to try to make the money look like it appears clean. Now, it's not dirty money. It's dirty money in this sense. It is the source mm. which is dirty. It is legitimate. It's not from, an illegi it's from a legitimate source. So the launderer then wants to make it look like it's from a legitimate source. As the example which he used for Al Capone, he has a legitimate business, a laundromat, which is to wash clothes and whatever. Then he has all these um, smuggling activities. So he then gets the uh, proceeds from the smuggling activities, mixes them with the uh, legitimate money, so that now whoever is looking at it will look like it's all legit. It all looks good. Mm -hmm. That's the aim of money laundering, making the the, the process making the money look like the, like the legitimate. Mm. So now your question, is it fake money? No. Fake money would be probably in the realm now of forgery or, or something. Mm. So it's the activity of uh, counterfeiting mm. of currency would be the, illeg the illegitimacy of the transaction, which now is then now generates a process. Now someone who is involved in that um, counterfeiting of currency or an activity like that, his aim, the aim is probably to get profits, to make to make some money out of it. Now, when the proceeds of that counterfeiting activity, yeah, that would be now the proceeds which now are, are then known at. So then, in trying now to make that uh, counterfeiting money look like it's good, mm -hmm. that would be money laundering. So counterfeiting itself would be an illegal activity, an illicit activity. Mm -hmm. But then trying to make the money look like it's um, from a legitimate source, trying to disguise the origin of mm -hmm. the counterfeiting. So if you ask me, James, where is all this bling bling coming from? When you're looking flashy, the cars, the life yeah. that you lay, where's the money come from? I say I'm a legitimate businessman, I'm doing business, I mm -hmm. do this. But I cannot explain the kind of business that I'm doing. Or even if I'm doing the business, maybe I have some small legitimate business, but the bulk of the business probably is some illegal activity, mm -hmm. counterfeiting of currency, drug trafficking, and mm -hmm. all those things. So all these proceeds, I may take them, and as, as Rakesha said, if I have a legitimate source, try to make them look legitimate and then they hide them that mm. way. So the, I don't know, you call it wash, wash, I don't know that. Wash, wash. Yes, that one <laughs> would be probably uh, uh, um, in the realm of counterfeiting or forgery. Yeah, something. I think yes. then we, as as just from the very little kwa ground, mm -hmm. we have been mis, mis there's a misconception mm -hmm. that wash, wash is. Um, is illegal tender because even from the videos we were watching on social mm -hmm. they were i don't know whether they were legit or not mm -hmm. but we just kept seeing somebody printing money printing money so that is not what we're talking about here is legit tender just or the source is the problem right yes now it gets into the system yes it's legit it is not fake it's not fake because the the, the, the the wash wash that one that would be someone now just obtaining uh, money mm. by false pretenses, yeah. and uh, I, I just call it a con, you know, like yeah. just, like pata putea, yeah. that's just a con. So now there's money laundering and then it becomes anti-money laundering, and that is now what you're all about. Yes. Anti-money laundering. Is, is it ever legit? It's a very stupid question, but is it ever legit? Uh, money laundering. Money laundering being legit. Like, you know, I, I was I was looking at it like they, it's money laundering, then in some checks, now now turns into anti money laundering and I wonder to myself just from a layman's thought. So is it ever a point where money laundering is okay? No. no not ever. Uh, anti money laundering is countering money laundering. Countering yeah. So anti <laughs> is counter. So uh the people who are involved in this are, are money launderers. Mm. Money launderers 
Manonen is actually a sophisticated criminal activity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, in instances it even involves use of professionals because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, the people who are involved in it, they want to look like like the legitimate people. Mm -hmm. So they'll go to lengths and extents. They hire yeah. professionals. They'll use uh, um, they run whatever businesses. they run businesses yeah, yeah. because they want to hide this. So the the people who are involved in uh, combating that, um, the U and I, yeah. and everyone else, law enforcement, the judicial. Now we the initiatives we take. That's not the anti money laundering okay. because we are trying to combat, trying to counter that. All right. So what are the laws that uh, come in place when we talk about money laundering money in Kenya? Uh, what question? Um, we have uh, we we have uh, the obvious one is uh, proceeds of crime and anti money laundering. Act uh, commonly known by its uh, acronym OCAMNA mm -hmm. 2009, but we also have the UN conventions. Uh, we have the Vienna Convention in 1988, we have the UNTOC, uh, it's known as the Palermo Convention. This one was uh, it's for the uh, transnational organized crime, and it both both these UN conventions they, they talk about uh, the offense of money laundering and also the United Nations. Uh, Convention Against Corruption, the AU uh, Convention on Preventing and uh, Combating Corruption, both these, uh, uh, these conventions, they also talk about uh, laundering of proceeds of crime. We have ratified all these conventions. So uh, at the international level, uh, uh, rather in regard to international instruments, uh, those are the ones that we have that uh, Criminalize money laundering, and then now we have the mm. income. Ah, okay, so what criminal conduct is captured under money laundering? Um, and uh, let me say, let me talk about uh, the ingredients. Essentially, mm. the ingredients it would be knowledge. Someone know, knowingly knows that uh, knows that this property uh, was is uh, is a, is is a, is a proceed of crime. So with that knowledge, they proceed to uh, either enter into an agreement uh, or a transaction or an arrangement with someone or uh, maybe um, or just deal with that property then uh, and the effect of uh, entering into that agreement or that uh, transaction or an arrangement, the effect is to either conceal the source, uh, the nature, or the location of that property, or the the effect is to uh, uh, maybe help someone uh, to avoid prosecution, or maybe to remove or diminish this property. Mm -hmm. So now we have to look at do they know, and uh, do they have uh, an arrangement or a, 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 a transaction? And did, uh, what was the effect of that arrangement? Did they, was the effect to conceal? Was the effect to make someone uh, avoid prosecution? Or was the effect to make this property get diminished or to remove it? So the other obvious thing is we have to ensure was this a proceed of crime in itself? So that we actually we are dealing with a proceed of crime. So those, those would be the... The, the essential ingredients to look at money yes. laundering. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, Mr. James, how does this money get in Kenya? How do people wash their money? How do you, how do you start suspecting somebody is washing money, <laughs> laundering money? Yeah, <laughs> Sorry, you know, you know, watch, watch. Uh, yeah, okay, but yeah, money laundering. How do you, how do you start? How do you imagine someone is? Uh... Now, uh, when you look at it, uh, all the uh, any criminal activity uh, will generate proceeds. Some criminal activities will generate more than others. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the common activities related to money in Kenya. Things like corruption, drug trafficking, etc. Mm -hmm. So um, the thing then to look at is look at uh, the, the, the for our case in the case of the country, the prevalent criminal activities will generate yes. proceeds because. The aim of our persons involved in money laundering is to get this money, to keep it out of the reach of, of the state, so the state cannot reach it and, uh, and get it back. So the aim of uh, disguising um, the origin of this money, 
investing it in commingling to the transaction investing it is so that um, um this money uh, it's from an illegal source and you know money if money you just put money on the table it's it's not useful mm -hmm. for money to be useful to you you have to invest it you have to put it some so, so the money can work for yeah. you yeah yeah if you just take money and keep it in the pocket so it doesn't work for you mm -hmm. so the people who are involved in this are also like business people mm -hmm. so they have to get that money working now, but the money has come from an illegitimate source. So what they want to do is to disguise the origin of that money, get it into legitimate business, so that now when uh, um, the stages uh, of money laundering, there's one where now uh, the, the, where, where, where the money has come from the illegal source. So the first thing they need to do is to place it into the financial system. Mm -hmm. For this money to be invested, you need then to place it to... to, to to make it work for you, Richard. So you need to place it into the financial system. Mm -hmm. So it sits on the table, it sits on your pocket, it's not useful. So Don't place, put it under your pillow. It, yes. <laughs> the first thing is to place the placement. Yeah. Once then you then place it, then you want to then now uh, uh, integrate it. So this is actually what I'm looking at. Is this now where we see, not, is it placement or integration, integration maybe, where we see now people building high-rise flats and flat yes, cars. Yes. That yeah. now will be the end product. So the mm -hmm. first thing that you have to do is to place it. So then, uh, once they then place it, so that the aim of now all this is to create uh, transactions, layers, which, which will then get, so when you're looking at it, you will not know them, it's then from uh, an illegal, illegal source. source. So once then it's been placed in the financial mm -hmm. system, it will be moved around, placed in different investments, uh, placed in different areas, and, that, and then the reason why it's transnational is that it doesn't just occur in one country. I can really choose to invest in Uganda, Dubai, etc. Buy an island somewhere and then bring it back. So by the time now, ultimately, I've finished all this, we've been integrated into the financial system. When you try to trace it, you, can't. you cannot then determine what, uh, whether it was from a legitimate source. And if you go back to what Rakesh said, the Al Capone thing, when you mix that dirty money and that clean money, you wouldn't be able can't to tell. tell. The difference. Yes. Yeah. You wouldn't be able to tell. Yeah. Now, the reason why we come in as a financial reporting center yeah. is then to follow the trail of the money. So when it came from, even if you put it there, you sent it where, invested it there, we are following the money. Okay. So that eventually, even if you have this high-rise building, we can be able to trace that high-rise building to the process of corruption. Ah, okay. We can be able to trace that flashy car you have to the process of where it came from. Mm -hmm. It's like that now, when, I, when the trial comes to a case, you can then be able to say, we want to then have this building forfeited to the state because it's the origin of this money is a proceed of is crime. A proceed of crime. Mm. Yeah, so that's then now what we will then try right. to do. Um, and Wakesha had a very nice diagram, I think. Uh, maybe Ian, you can put it up, uh, just to show us the steps in in in, in money laundering. The steps. And when we put that up on Twitter, somebody said, why are you teaching me how to do money laundering? So sh is it important that people actually know this? Yes, it's mm. important for the public to know uh, because one of the sources of information is also the public themselves. Mm -hmm. if, oh, yes. if yes, if if now you see James, I'm living a flashy lifestyle. You know James is just a civil servant and the pay of civil servants. I'm a farmer. I'm a farmer unless I'm growing um, some mm -hmm. cash crop cash somewhere. Crop. somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. but still even that. Yes, yeah. but it will be able to raise them because yeah. a key source of information, because we get information from our reporting institutions who have an obligation to then report those transactions, mm. but also members of the public can also be able to give information which can then help him. Okay. So if members of the public they know about the subject of money laundering, they can then be able to contribute. Because let's not forget about this. This is a societal problem. It cannot be tackled by one agency alone. No. It has to be tackled by we have a role to play. Everyone has a role to play. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So Wakesh, tell us about the steps in money laundering. Okay, before I, I, I even uh, talk about the steps, I think I'd also want to piggyback on what he's saying yeah. and just agree that even what we are doing right now, like uh, this ODPP cafe, it's also a form of uh, internet mediated uh, yeah. anti corruption strategy. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, uh, over the over over time, I, I expect that we'll have uh, uh, we'll have empowered each other and empowered citizens actually make make better a decision yes yeah. and they actually make a difference because now 
you you come out of this place now with an with a with a sense of what actually money laundering is yeah. and when you can maybe spot that someone is actually involved in money laundering you can blow the whistle you can report you can make an anonymous report mm. also, so even yeah, this is actually it's important it's a form of education and it's part of an anti-corruption and i'm taking some time um ignorance is no defense yes get to know so that you don't get snookered you know you can yes. be found in any of the processes yes innocently yes just because you didn't you know. can dissent and i'm going to show yeah. you how all right so, uh, um, let me before you go on that what you said is very important sorry to cut you short yes, the when you look at even um, in terms of money laundering she you have talked about assisting so the question will be did you assist someone knowing of course the issue then will come yeah. So if if I come to you as a professional and you assist me in laundering money, yeah, you can also find yourself being charged also with the assisting in terms of laundering process yes. of crime without knowing. Yeah, so yeah. it's a very important thing. You're so like the wife it. of her or yeah. a husband of her, and I want to actually put that tweet. I laughed when I saw somebody say, "What do you now? You want me to do money laundering?" But let's go ahead. Yes. Okay. So yeah. now, uh, uh, as uh, going to our cycle, the first thing that is there is the collection of dirty money. So I'll, I'll talk maybe from there and I'll use the analogy of a, let's say a drug, I'm a drug kingpin. Yeah. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I have loads of cash I generate from my, from my, from my drug business. Yeah. So I need to place this money somewhere because I cannot have a lot of money hanging around mm -hmm. or maybe I've looted public funds somewhere. Mm -hmm. I cannot afford to have all this money in my house. At some point I need to have I need to, to have it to one for you and also put it safe. Someone yeah. can steal it from me. <laughs> so where do I where do I where which is a safe place? At yeah. least let me put it in the bank. Yeah. But because uh Mr <laughs> if I take it to the bank, probably if it's over two million bob, you'll be asked where you I'll got be it asked from. where did I get this money? So I might need to do something called structuring. Structuring is you're putting you 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 you'll be giving smaller denominations just below the one million bob so that there's no report made to Mr. Manyonga's yeah. institution. So but I to a question, isn't that why now banks nowadays for whatever amount you want to transact, there's a narrative. Yes. Yes, those those now those those, those are now those questions that come in. Ah, now these are the money laundering okay. measures. Okay. So now the first uh the first stage. Uh, in the money laundering uh, cycle displacement. This is where now the launderer introduces the money into the financial system. Mm -hmm. So they can do this in various ways. They can do that structuring that I've said, maybe uh, put the money in, in small bits, ask several people to put the money in different accounts. Mm -hmm. 200 from here, uh, 300 from so you your mother, your daughter. Are, ooh, 400, you know, someone will say it needs a strategy. Yes, a strategy. <laughs> and then sometimes, yeah. you see, I talked about concealing maybe the nature or the soul. Someone, maybe it's Kenya shillings. I say, no, I put in dollars. So you're mm. already concealing. Yeah. Or maybe I'll decide, mm. I, I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll even smuggle it mm. out yeah. in cash form. Yeah. But, um, the first stage is placed in. So you put it in a bank. And then once you put it in the bank, the effect number one is to get rid of the excess cash that you have. And then number two is to introduce it into the financial system. So the second stage uh, will be layering. Layering, the, it really helps in creating the distance between the, the money and its dirty source. So when you... So sorry, so at placement is where it is nearer the source. Yeah, you see, that's in fact that's the point where the money launderer is very vulnerable because he has ah. the cash it's very easy to catch him because okay. even a suspicious trans uh, tra transaction. transaction can be raised at that point okay. if the banker notices this person has brought in a lot of money and maybe he never brings a lot of money and sometimes that's why some uh, some of the money launderers will have a business a front business like maybe a cash intensive business like a restaurant so that mm. it does not really look like it's out of the ordinary for me to be bringing mm. huge amounts of money okay so that can be another way so that mm. i'll just bring the money with guys here yeah. 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 mm -hmm. so now after you've placed you you layer it how do you layer it you it, now layering mm -hmm. the it creates a, a distance but then also it really helps in creating um in disguising the money trade so you do so many wire transfers transfers you do numerous transactions this is where you know you can get someone doing wire transfers to offshore jurisdictions mm -hmm. so 
this money going to this account to that account yeah. this account going wearing to another account uh, this account going to a, an account that's a shell company mm -hmm. that shell company is owned by another account mm -hmm. so really creating a very complex mm -hmm. web mm -hmm. and the whole uh, the whole aim is just to you know, really create a convoluted yeah. web so that you really don't trace this money. Mm -hmm. And then es uh, essentially after the money has really traveled uh, around, uh, you'll find that maybe it's, it's, it's now going to be integrated somewhere. Someone will receive it at some point. Yeah. It will go, you know, maybe at one particular point. Mm -hmm. and then it will, it, will, uh, it will be received. Someone might even withdraw then go and buy uh, property, go and buy luxury vehicles. At that point, this money now has been integrated. It's fully in the financial system. You cannot say this money came from drugs. Mm. This person will now buy, invest in, you know, real estate. By the time you come and ask me the source of my money, no, I have. I but own, you can see I have. I own houses which I rent. This is, this is the source of my yeah. money. So the last stage is the, the integration of, uh, of the money. The money is still in the system. Wow. Yes. And that yeah. now this person has actually managed to clean their dirty money. And is an, he, he's, he now seems he's an honest member of society. <laughs> Wow, wow, wow. So um, just the other question I may have again from an ODPP perspective. How do you come to make the decision to charge such a case? What do you look at? The, 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 the ingredients that mm -hmm. I, I mentioned yeah. earlier. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, am I allowed, is plea bargaining allowed in such cases? Uh, we've, done, we've done some plea bargaining. Uh, there's a case for family bank where the 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 the, the, the offences of uh, fa fa failure to report suspicious transactions, the the bank and uh, some senior managers were charged. Mm -hmm. So the, there was a plea agreement entered, and the, they were convicted, and the bank was fined. And uh, they paid 64, 64.5. The bank paid. Yes. Okay. And uh, 20, the court ordered that they put 24.5 should go back to NYS. Mm -hmm. Yes. So oh, it's good you're mentioning a case study because somebody also mentioned on Twitter and said, mm -hmm. Uh, we need a case study, preferably between 2019 and 2021, that yes. brings to life this whole money laundering story. Yes, and that is also in our ODPP report, which is available uh, in our website, yeah. odpp.go.k. Yeah. I'd also encourage uh, people who are watching to also really interact with the report, because it also has a number of uh, cases, uh, and lots of information, mm -hmm. and also some of uh, the policy documents yeah. that we have are also uh, on our website. On your website, so okay. Yeah. All right. So James, you said something you were told when we were growing up. Crime does not pay, but you are seeing it. We are seeing different manifestations of quick money, poverty of both the mind and the actual poverty. People want to get rich quick, but this still happens. So, um, what is the impact of this to the economy? Well, the impact of uh, uh, money laundering is that um, initially it may look like it's helpful to the economy, yeah. but it doesn't. It actually uh, distorts uh, the economy. Now, let's let's um, look at it in various um, in various ways. Um, let's pick a, a trade or business. Any? Mm -hmm. uh, real estate. Let's take real yeah. estate. So, if in real estate, um, you're selling. Uh, real estate and you're a developer, yeah? So you look for property, you, you develop it and then and then you, you sell it. You're a legitimate uh, developer. Yeah. Uh, I'm also a developer, but uh, I also have, I'm, I'm also involved in criminality. So what would then happen is, in the process of then uh, developing the real estate, uh, I would look for funds, you also look for funds, probably yeah. with borrow, yeah. you borrow, know, get funds from elsewhere. Mm -hmm. But in addition to the funds I have, I have this illegitimate fund which has come from uh, those illicit sources we have said. So I use my funds then to put on my development. I can then now sell mm -hmm. developments mm -hmm. at uh, probably cheaper mm -hmm. than what you would do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what does that, what does that then do? It knocks off legitimate businesses. Ah, so because it means you, you cannot compete. You can't compete. You can't compete favorably. 
yeah. because I've gotten illegal money. I don't care. I mean, um, mm. where it has come from. So where a unit probably you would sell it at probably ten million. I probably sell it at eight million. Mm. Yeah. So mine goes quickly. Uh, I'm able to get you the funds. You are struggling. And not market your, forces. Yes, market forces. Me, I cannot go and I move and I move. And maybe buy you out. Yes, I buy you. <laughs> so what is what's happening there? I've not held as a legitimate business, business person. Mm-hmm. You cannot then compete. Two, government doesn't get revenue in terms of taxation. Mm-hmm. These illegal sources. See, I'm trying to hide them and all that. This money is not coming back to then help the government then grow the economy. Then another uh, um, uh, impact then, the, the resources which we are then uh, using to combat money laundering, we could have used them for legitimate businesses. There's so much money and time and energy that the government is putting on in terms of just fighting economic crimes. Mm-hmm. We could have been investing this, these proceeds and energy and money and time to probably harness the the for agenda and <laughs> and all that. Yeah. So we are concentrating our energies instead of having uh, more teachers, whatever. We need more prosecutors. We need we more investigators. We need more institutions that are carefully hiring people yeah. analyzing these transactions. Yes. So then we're not concentrating on the real uh, uh, things which then help yeah. the economy. Yeah. So those are just some of them that I said. Then, then also, um, when you look at it in terms of uh, foreign directors, the, the country yes. then is not is uh, is not uh, in long run will not be stable because an investor will not put their money. In a, in, a, in a jurisdiction or having which is perceived to be risky. Mm-hmm. So where foreign direct investment would come and someone wants to invest, if they look at it and then they see that um, if they invest, let's say, in a jurisdiction, if is, let's say, are known to be a haven for money laundering, there will be risks of investing in Kenya. What are some of these risks? When they try to repatriate their funds, they will be subjected to international scrutiny. It will make it costly, it will make it expensive. They also have a chance of losing their money. So they will then take their, their funds to the jurisdictions which are stable and are not known, whatever. So that's why, even as a country, we have to make sure that uh, nationally we are seen and known, not only seen, but we're also doing best to in terms of combat base. Mm-hmm. So, uh, long and short, um, the dirty money, the hot money is not good. It's not good. It's not good. Yeah. Okay. I'd also add uh, that it's also domestically, uh, the, the Mwananchi also will lose faith in the financial institutions. If I see that my bank is always in, you know, in the red, yeah. uh, uh, it's, 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 it's not conforming to the anti-money laundering mm-hmm. uh, regulations. I don't want to put my money there. Mm-hmm. And you see, when you also constantly remove your money from the banks, it's also, it, it, it's not it stabilizing yeah, them. It stabilizes. Mm-hmm. And then also money laundering facilitates crime. You know, it's yeah. basically a twin of corruption. <laughs> and uh, it also facilitates uh, terrorism. terrorism. In fact, uh, like if we were to talk about the financial action task force recommendations, they always write money laundering and terrorism. How, how are they how are they connected? How is money laundering connected to terrorism or to counter terrorism? They are twins. They are twins. <laughs> how is that? Um um they they connect because um they, they, for money laundering, let's let's look at it. For money laundering, the the source of the money is uh legitimate. Yes. Um, then there's for terrorism financing, the source could be legitimate or illegitimate. It could be legitimate the same way under the dirty money uh, being used to uh, trying to disguise it. Or for terrorism financing, you can have legitimate business. I'm doing legitimate business, legitimate businessman or earn my salary, but I take that legitimate funds to fund a terrorism activity. Mm-hmm. So the sources are, are then to but then the, 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 uh, the aim of the two, uh, which brings now their, uh, why they look at together, they'll both try to disguise the origin of the funds. Mm-hmm. For the money launderer, he wants, the, the launderer wants to disguise where the funds are going to. So they'll both go to Akesha said, placement, yeah, the layering, the integration, yeah. etc. All this is aimed at creating the complex of the final find out where it has from. The same uh, channels used for laundering money are the same channels used for chosen financing. The person who's funding the terrorism activity is also using those ch- same channels. It come from legitimate sources, you want to disguise where the money has come from mm-hmm. so that then you can use it for to fund terrorism. Mm-hmm. Or you've come from a legitimate activity, but you still want to disguise mm-hmm. that uh, the, that you're funding the activity, so you have to go through that, that whole process. Mm-hmm. 
So that's why the two are then are, are they're related. They're, related, yes. they're twins. Mm. Okay, uh, we talked about banks here, and I'm wondering, uh, Kenya, Kenya, according to Kipra, Kenya hits eighty two point nine percent financial inclusion. Like we are that financially included, as in everybody, almost everyone has an access to a bank account. I think I was watching something that said that like about 25% of Americans don't have access. So we are doing very well in terms of financial inclusion. So then how does this play uh, in your space? How do you support? I, I feel like it's a very thin line when you talk about that money and financial inclusion. Mobile banking in Kenya has is so maybe maybe a hundred percent right now you pay everything via a pesa. Has it made it work for for that money to move through? And how do you then get to this? Well, you know there, there are two things which are very key. Yeah. When you look at financial inclusion, you also look at financial integrity. Yes. They go hand in hand. Yeah. Now for for us in this space, when you have more people in the financial system, the better for us, the better for the country. Yeah. Because then you're then able to then tell where the transactions are coming from, where they're going through, the, you can be able to follow them up. When the money is, uh, uh, when people are excluded, when they're dealing in cash out there, yeah. uh, and they're not really um, integrated to the financial system, it's then difficult to tell what's going on. Yes. But when the money is in the system, um, you're able to, even as planners, you're able to plan more, you can be able to know how much money is coming. The government can be able to, make his plans and do forecasting in a bit more in a refined manner. But um, is it a, a bar to financial inclusion? No, it's not a bar. Because when you look at um, um, the aim, and uh, as I say, when you're when you pushing financial inclusion, you're also pushing financial integrity. Mm -hmm. When the people who are coming in to be able to, to, to transact, and the aim of all these measures which uh, the national community and government is putting in is not to deter people from undertaking financial transactions from either banking or using their mobile money. No, it's actually the opposite is to encourage them. Mm. Encourage them to be able to use this, but in a legitimate, in a, in a legitimate way. Is that so, why the agent will ask for my ID? Exactly. They need to know. Because one of the things which when you're then dealing with this, is uh, what the, uh, you know, they need to know that they, they know your customer requirements. Yeah. You want to know. Mm -hmm. That um, the James that you're dealing is uh, when the person then uh, the person who's uh, transacting is it James is it James so how do you then do that you produce an identification document which can identify you either ID or uh, or, or ID or something yeah. or, or an identification document mm -hmm. which can then be able to do that but when you look at it this way when we have all the system yeah. the good thing they also have cut fraud okay yes yeah when you put these financial integrity measures. Yeah. They also then help cut fraud. Mm -hmm. So when you're combating money laundering, you're also by extension yeah. combating a lot of other activities, yeah. uh, fraud, etc. So yeah. they, they go hand in hand. They go hand in hand. Yeah. Okay, I was also thinking about uh, diaspora remittance and how again it's an avenue for money laundering. Do you do you also look at those? How money comes in and how money goes out? Yes, um, um, uh, we, we look at that. As I said, um, yeah. all, all the reporting institutions have an yeah. obligation. Yeah. Um, um, to know uh, where the, the money comes, where from. the money is coming from. So yeah. if if you are expecting money from out, there'll be the person who's sending the money will need to give the details. They'll give the details of who they are, purpose of the transactions, the identification documents, mm -hmm. and the person who's receiving, etc. So all this information will then be useful then in terms of uh, even the, the institution which is receiving it will have the details of the money being received, etc., mm -hmm. and the purposes for for, for that. Now. The for money laundering, one thing is then key. Uh, in most times, you will not be able to tell at face value that the transaction is legitimate or the money laundering. Normally, you'll be able to tell this probably by looking backwards, mm -hmm. and that's why uh, the audit trail, mm -hmm. documentation, yeah. transactions are very key okay. in terms of looking backwards and tracing mm -hmm. backwards. Mm -hmm. And that's why for us, it is very important in terms of documentation. Keeping a history of the transaction, keeping a record of the people, keeping a record of what transpired. Because when you look backwards, then you'll be able to trace, okay, we have this, this, this transaction. When I relate this, this transaction came on a certain day uh, and it came from Wakesho. Mm -hmm. When Wakesho, when you look at it, uh, she appeared in the news on a particular day, is alleged to have received money from someone. Yeah. Could there then be a relation? So then you then now be able to then tie it up. So when you look at even in terms of the remittances, you remember, Bakesha talked about layering. Yes. 
where now you're investing money, moving it across jurisdictions. So even the, in terms of the national brand returns, that could be part of where the layering could then take yeah. place, moving into different jurisdictions, investing them in bonds in other countries, oh, investing yeah. them in real estate, investing in different places. Mm. And uh, for the people who are involved, they'll always try to move the money where they can be able to take their investments, clean them, mm. and then get them out ultimately. So even when you go back to the question you had asked about, um, is it good for the economy? If the economy has weak systems, what will what will happen? The Londoners will come, use the economy to clean their money. When it has been cleaned, they will take their money and invest them where it is safe. Uh, they will never invest there because they know that place is weak. Mm. And they, oh yes, they even then they are bright. Even then they are bright. <laughs> okay. So at the end of the day, they want to put the investments where they are safe. Yeah. Don't forget they also worked hard. Yeah. So yes. it's now yeah. the form of artificial inflation. Yes. 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 Mm. Oh, quite interesting. I know that you also said that uh, yeah. you were talking about diaspora and what uh, I'm thinking also about the informal value uh, transfer systems like this something like the Hawala. Uh, well, yes. it's like a form of uh, it's a trust-based uh, system mm -hmm. of transfer man, mm -hmm. transferring money. So essentially, the money is not the physical money is not moving, but it's the value of the money mm -hmm. that is moving. So there's someone they call how Hawalada here yeah, in Kenya, and maybe an Hawalada in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. I make a phone call. I say now give uh, uh, so and so money. Yeah. And the, the person on the other side will have a password, they'll be given money, and then mm -hmm. they sort of balance their books mm -hmm. in a certain mm -hmm. way. So they, uh, it's also uh, that uh, that form of system is also vulnerable mm -hmm. to money laundering mm -hmm. because most of the time there'll be a language barrier. Yes. So an investigator might not really get to pick the up their yeah. yeah. A lot of money can also be. Yeah, okay. Lost. So you work with banks, you work, do you work with the registrar of companies? Yes, we work with um, basically everyone. Everyone, <laughs> including me. Including you. <laughs> now, and uh, this is one. The, the way it's structured is the, um, um, when you look at again, the um, aim of the lender is to get the money to the financial system. So, to get to the financial system, there are certain people you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. We call them gatekeepers. Yes. These are the, these are the uh, banks, the forex bureaus, yes. the real estate companies the professional, etc. You have to use them then to get them in the financial system. Mm -hmm. So then the law places an obligation on them to then monitor transactions, look at the transactions, and then to, to, report. Mm -hmm. to report. So we deal with, with those people. Then mm -hmm. we deal with mm -hmm. uh, uh, investigative agencies. Mm -hmm. we, then, uh, we then deal with uh, supervisory bodies. Supervisory bodies to ensure that the, that the people who they regulate are uh, then implementing the money anti money obligations. Mm -hmm. uh, investigative bodies then to ensure that uh, the money then that um, can be traced and then we can help them with the investigation. Mm -hmm. Then ultimately, of course, the investigative bodies will then come to themselves out yeah. of the OTP. So then you can then prosecute. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, in that case, if OTP wants some clarity, we are available to provide. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, then the, then the judicial system. But then also, uh, in terms of implementing policy, we have to advise government on policy. Combat my in terms of financing. We are not alone. Mm -hmm. We are part of a regional network, we're part of the international community. Mm -hmm. What we do or don't do impacts us as a jurisdiction, impacts us as uh, the international community. Yeah. So we, as I said, we interact with people. And then the other key thing is, because of the nature uh, of the work we do, we have to then relate with our partners out there. So then uh, we have an obligation then in terms of even tracing. If, for example, money is a certain jurisdiction and we want to then find out this transaction happened in that jurisdiction, can you be able to share information with us? Then we also have that network mm -hmm. able to then get that information mm -hmm. then to help close it back up. Okay. So my, maybe just before I go to social, um, uh, should lawyers be included as reporting agents? Like, I'm wondering, does the grant privilege extend to financial plan? You need to give us team. Okay. Anything to serve, you know? You have to have team. Yeah. So that you can have this, uh, this, this conversation. Yes. But personally, I think, I think uh, it's something that is progressive, especially when you look at the... The, the the money laundering uh, aspect yeah. where a country is really really vulnerable to money la laundering i think it's something that needs to be looked at uh, progressively mm -hmm. and then um 
uh, I was actually looking at the financial ac uh, action task force recommendations because that's where it's recommendation 22 i think that's where it actually puts uh, that uh, the financial action task force is an international policy making yeah. uh, body mm -hmm. it's it's essentially they recommend it, it sets standards yeah. which are called uh, the fatf recommendations mm -hmm. And essentially, it's supposed to be like soft law, but I think it's more of hard law. <laughs> uh, on the ground, it's hard law. Yeah. But they also have, those recommendations have interpretive notes. So I think when we uh, interrogate the interpretive notes, you can, you can understand uh, some of the reasons for uh, such recommendations. Mm. And maybe it's a conversation that we need to have mm. and understand. A bigger conversation. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Do you think it will help your institution? It does. Yeah. Just to add on to what uh, Alakesha said, when you look at it, <laughs> there are vulnerabilities um, um, in, in, this, in this whole thing. Yeah. Um, and the vulnerabilities extend to financial institutions, extend to um, um, real estate players, insurance companies, etc. Then the FATF, which has talked about, has looked at it, and there are certain businesses and professions mm -hmm. which are who are vulnerable to money laundering. Mm -hmm. You have accountants, mm -hmm. you have lawyers, you have trust and company service providers, you have real estate dealers. So, casinos, precious, precious metal, fillers, metal, yeah. uh, etc. Now, why are they vulnerable? They are vulnerable because of the nature of business that they do, mm -hmm. uh, and or because of the activities they provide or the services that they provide. Mm -hmm. Now, because of that vulnerability, they are attractive. They are attractive to uh, persons with criminal intention, money launderers. Money launderers will come then want to use these the professions or businesses either to to hide their money knowingly or unknowingly. So when you tighten on the financial side, we have done and most we just have done, you'll find they then move towards the, the weaker links. They will move towards the, uh, the businesses and professions which are then weaker. Mm -hmm. So for us to be able to combat this thing holistically, we need them to tighten the, the rules across the board. Mm -hmm. So now we have the financial system on board, we have the um, designated uh, businesses on board, with the exclusion of lawyers mm -hmm. currently. So that then also puts increase the vulnerabilities of the legal profession. Yes. So the legal profession also then now also need to be included so that then they can also do their bit in terms of combating Money but it's a conversation which I don't know whether you have enough time for. But we, are <laughs> really, we need to stop we, we, that. We need to yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. But long <laughs> and short it's <laughs> does report they have their yeah. their financial intelligence uh, center okay. act okay uh, lawyers are reporting entities so we also need that no we are thinking well, we need that. well it's the same thing that yeah. uh, the pokamla bill oh is, uh, that is, bill yes it's proposing, it's uh, proposing okay. that, but i know this uh, south africa they they they, they do report not just south and, africa uh, a lot of jurisdiction actually yeah. a lot of uh, i think when you look at uh, Kenya were a member of the Eastern and Southern African and Northern Group. Mm -hmm. um, all the jurisdictions in the region, um, lawyers are reporting. Yes. Um, even outside uh, the uh, region in South Africa, when you look at Jefferson, and also beyond, the lawyers are then reporting. Mm. So it's not something unusual. It's, it's, not, unusual. Not, it's not unusual. Yes, yes. It's uh, really opposed in so many ways. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But you find uh, there, there are certain uh, law firms that they're actually employing a risk-based approach oh, okay. in really assessing their clients and mm. doing you know proper uh, client due diligence mm. because of uh, all this um, the whole anti-money laundering mm. so i think it's also it's something that someone needs to also take their own initiative even as a law firm okay. to implement this okay. and so any notable convictions that you can relate to as the public um I, I'd, I'd say that the, the family like, bank. like the family bank yeah. one, and i'd also talk about the the deferred prosecution agreement mm -hmm. uh, that's related to the five uh, commercial banks uh -huh. um, they, they they were penalized and uh, they paid 385 million mm -hmm. and it was uh, concerning money laundering okay. suspicious transactions so okay. i think that's a notable one and mostly because we also used something uh, a non-trial non-trial resolution um, 
a DPA, which is which was really novel. Mm -hmm. uh, we have not used that before. Okay. Yes, so right. that's not a Okay, so uh, we are on social, we are on YouTube, we are on Twitter, and uh, of course on Facebook. Okay. And there's some comments here. Some are just comments, some are questions. So I'll just go and I'll just see how to to moderate them. Uh, so Caroline Acheno says insightful conversation. Uh, Gitonga says great historical perspective, great example for Manyonga and Wakesho. Um, then who else is here? Uh, thanks, Beatrice. So Facebook, uh, we have a guy called Chep Kien Jr. He says good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, thank you for great insight on money laundering, and I believe the growing use of technological devices in carrying out transactions, the vice has greatly prospered. Has it? Has technology made it made it prosper? I'd say to the extent of uh, things like uh, virtual currency, yeah, um, it makes uh, money laundering a bit. The easy. bitcoins. Yes, uh. yes, the bitcoins, and uh, there's something actually called now cyber laundering. Well, that's now where you're using the <laughs> cryptocurrency yeah. and bitcoin so you are hiding you will hide your assets you see now the placing the placing the layer yeah that we say no you layer through yeah bitcoin through uh all, all those virtual currency which is something and it just changes if we don't have the investigators and all of us we don't have you the capacity it. yeah even for cyber for us forensics will yeah. not get it so yeah. of course that in that way uh, technology facility mm. and even the, the the fact that the click of a button and wire money into you know offshore jurisdictions that is obviously makes it uh, easy just I mean, to add on to what yeah. she's saying i mean it increases the velocity of money mm -hmm. yeah the technology is good yeah and we should embrace technology but as as we embrace technology um, as it provides opportunities, it also provides um, mm -hmm. So even if you look at now uh, in the country currently, the way we transact financially is not the same way we did five, ten years That's ago not, because yeah. of changes in technology. But the beauty about this is that um, the the regime to combat and laundering is quite alive to this. Mm -hmm. It's quite alive that there will always be changes to technology. And you're keeping that. up with the change. So the requirement yeah. is that before any technology is produced, you must conduct a risk assessment mm -hmm. to then see to what extent will that technology be used or abused for money laundering purposes. Mm -hmm. So as you're rolling it out, as you're implementing it, you then make sure you put in place safeguards for money laundering. Mm -hmm. Now, for us as a country, one good thing like, like mobile money has taken root. By the time when it was being introduced, Safeguards are then put in place to make sure that by the time it's rolled out, it will combat to the money laundering regime and uh, in the, in the law mm -hmm. and, the yeah. and as it continuously evolves, then also uh, safeguards are then put in place. Mm -hmm. Because you cannot change, you cannot stop technology. You can't stop, you can't stop But yeah. what you need to then to be is to be alive to the risks it presents and then make sure that you're able to mitigate those risks. Mm -hmm. So he says Kenya is among the major money laundering jurisdictions globally. Is that true? And my concerns to the panelists this morning are so. Before we go to his concerns, is it true that we are? <laughs> I don't know what is it based in that for. Is it based? Is this a, we are a financial hub? I think. Is it based on information or is it just perception? Yes, we are a financial hub, and that also that makes us now a financial hub. We're then attractive because a lot of people want to then come in, and yeah. that then behoves us as a as a as a country. <laughs> then to then make sure we then put in place systems and places. To make sure that they're then not abused for money laundering purposes. Mm -hmm. Because as a financial hub, people want to then bring their money in. Yes. But also people want to get their money out. So people look for areas where it's easy to bring money in and then to move money out. So financial hub is a vulnerability. It's a good thing, but it can be a vulnerability depending on how we play it. But I wouldn't say we are a money laundering uh, heaven. We are, we are vulnerable, yes, but I wouldn't say we are a heaven. Uh, and uh, finance, uh, financial institutions succeeded in combating money laundering in Kenya, and what are the obstacles to the prevention? And I think it's such about a lot of the challenges, yeah. but then uh, even the rules. But then to what extent have you succeeded? Um, for the financial department center, we are about eight, nine years old, having been um, uh, of course, it came into force in the act was established in 2010, but officially we operationalized in 2012. So from 2012 to now, yeah. 2020, yeah. 
But we have it, we have um, in our view, of course, the public is out there and our partners can then tell. But in our view, we have um, we have done a, a lot. We have done. Um, Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah, that's one. Okay. Quite a bit. Yes, yes, we've yeah. done quite a bit because when you look at um, what's our role, mm -hmm. our role, the purpose for which the FRC is established, is to make sure that we are able to then assist in terms of looking at financial transactions, and then and channel this to investigative bodies then to assist them. Mm -hmm. So, and we have done, I don't have the figures with me right yeah. now, but we have done quite a bit in terms of supporting the investigative ag agencies, whether it's the DCI, whether it's the EACC, uh, in terms of looking at uh, uh, the investigation. And most of these um, um, things that are taking place, uh, even now the, the one, the investigations and the prosecutions, we have had some input mm. into, into that, of course. You don't forget, this is all a joint effort. It's yes. not just one decision. Everyone does their bit. Yeah. We have also had some into input in, in, in some of this. Now, the, the good thing with this is that then, um, we're then also helping in terms of focusing on financial transactions because mm. we're a specialized agency looking at financial intelligence. And that, that's our bread and butter. Mm. That's what we wake up to do. That's what we do. So we're mm. trying to help focus in terms of financial intelligence and where this can be traced, where the assets can be traced, mm -hmm. where, where if they're hidden, where they can then be found. Mm -hmm. And uh, we keep, uh, we're improving day by day, but I think... Um, I'm wondering about the don't... three stages of, uh, of money laundering, which one is the most, which one do you look at the most? Am I just all of them? All of them, because you see, um, you, you see, a laundering will not say, I'm now placing, I'm now layering, I'm now <laughs> integrating. It doesn't announce. Yeah. So you'll find that nature of transactions, sometimes they'll go through all the stages, sometimes they will, they don't go through all the stages. You yeah, have to, no. you, you know, they don't even follow the yeah. So mm. you have to then be allowed to all that. So it will then depend. So um, we get information from uh, different sources. Then if some, you're going to open an account, an ETA today, and you can't explain, and the bank red flags, and you get that, we may get you at that stage. Um, it may be that you're already in the system. You're you trying cleaned to, it. No, no, you're okay. trying to layer, you're trying yeah. to send it, and the transactions don't make sense. It may be reported. Yeah. It may be that you have cleaned it. You know you are living well. You can still be even be found at the integration be stage. Found. Yeah. So yeah. At, at all the stages. Okay. So what policies and strategies has the ODPP put in place to reduce tax evasion, as it's the major type of money laundering in Kenya, where the act involves the use of offshore accounts to hide and perpetuate money laundering? I think that would be more of KRA. KRA. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. But, um... Uh, that no, I, I'm not really, I'm not really, that would be more of care. Okay. But I know there are things like, uh, uh, that would be maybe in the realm of money laundering to do with uh, tax evasion. There are aspects of uh, money law. I, I think there'd be aspects of money, something like bail erosion and profit shifting. Mm -hmm. That is something <laughs> that... <laughs> that <is not. laughs> I think that's something, oh, I know it's... A, it's Something to do with multinationals where a current company and a subsidiary mm. you know, they declare their profits in a place where oh, yeah. they transfer, they, transfer where, prices. Yes, transfer that. price where a place, declaring your profits where like, they, I know the I maybe just unverified, but what flower farms do? What I read something. They do. I'm not verified, not verified. I um, okay. how they will operate here and then go report uh, their Take the taxes to their home countries. Yes, so yeah. essentially that's yeah, that's that's what I mean by yeah. the Russian <laughs> okay. in transfer pricing. So but that would be more now in the realm of of care. Of care, it's not yeah. ours, right? Yeah. Uh let me see something else he asked. Uh, there's a sparring growth of betting firms and casinos in Kenya posing a loophole for money laundering schemes. How are you dealing with it? Um Casinos are, are reporting entities, uh -huh. um, so where they come across transactions, they yeah. are required them to report, and yeah. we can then look at that or we can pull up. Yeah. Um, uh, betting firms is, um, um, of course, uh, a concern, mm -hmm. uh, but then they are, when you look at uh, um, the, the, our regime, and even the international and global regime focuses more uh, on casinos. So the betting farms are mm. some of the new uh, emerging, mm. um, let me say, businesses and the professions which are at risk. So we have seen as a, as a jurisdiction the risks arising from that, and we are probably going to see if we can propose amendments to help You're to monitoring that. But um, uh, for, for, for betting farms, again, um, the, the, the nature of transactions there, first of all, the people who are betting. 
Um, the amounts would be small amounts. Yes. Uh, and then they are able, able to trace them. Mm -hmm. So the race wouldn't be much there. The problem that the, the race for money laundering purposes would be the whole establishment, establishment the, yeah. the ownership yes, of yes. these uh, farms, how the money is moved, that would probably where the risk would be for money laundering yeah. purposes. Not in the actual betting per Not se. Not in the actual betting. Yes. Yeah, that's a social problem. That's a social <laughs> problem, yes. Yeah, so Chef King has asked a lot of questions. With the growing rate of digital businesses, like in transmission of cryptocurrency, like you talked about, there's a higher likelihood for this to be a laguna for criminals. What strategies has ODP put in place uh, to tackle this dynamic? I think you need to, to go back to the basics, again, of the criminal justice system and just try and educate Chef King exactly where you, where ODPP comes in. I think he's gotten where what FRC does, to some extent, mm -hmm. but I think he's getting a bit diverted as to what your role is, okay. or your our, mandate. Our, our, our mandate, yeah. Yeah, basically, is, is to prosecute. Mm -hmm. So we receive uh, files that have already been investigated. Yes. And um, also, we also receive, we, we brief on files, we advise on files, mm -hmm. but essentially we will take files that have already been investigated and we are satisfied that if we take these files to court we can get a conviction mm -hmm. so as it's to prosecute. to prosecute but apart from that we also have we can also um we we, we also participate in policy mm -hmm. so the like the things is saying something like uh, uh cryptocurrency or like trafficking yes no mm -hmm. but Something like wildlife trafficking, that those, if it's a crime, we are going to prosecute. Yes. But if in, in terms of, of policy, we also we also do that. We also recommend that yeah. we will also uh, participate in policy making. Mm. Okay. Yes. So, Mark Arakim, thank you so much for joining us. Chef Payne, thanks so much for your interaction. I hope you got your questions answered. Maybe not all of them, but some. Uh, Mark Arab Kim, uh, thank you. An informative topic there. Bonnie Okemwa says this topic is timely. The public will get to know what money laundering is and the impact it has in our society. I think you made that very clear. And then Henry Kinyanji says, thank you, Akesha, for historical lesson on money laundering. I think you really uh, channeled us as to Alphonse and uh, Capone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so I think uh, I want to come to an end of this show. Uh, there are many questions, but time will not allow us to respond to all of them. Like I know, like Chep King has written a whole uh, story here, but he says, finally, I believe that the vice should be dealt with at placement, layering, and integration. Those are the three stages, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. If it's to be effectively managed. Also, Kenya needs to strengthen its implementation of good governance and anti-corruption measures. That is what it says. But then, like you're talking about personal values also come into place. What is your role as a citizen in, in all these stories? Because of quick money is not the way to go. Uh, you may be told in church that you need to get to the next level of your life yes. from a Toyota to a V8. Yes. Do it legitimately, right? Yes. I don't know. What's your parting shot as FRC today? Well, my parting shot is, uh, and thanks uh, for having me on this show. Yeah. Um, I just agree with um, uh, most of the, the viewers yeah. or whatever as commentators. Mm -hmm. It's a timely topic mm -hmm. because this is one of the new imagined crimes yes. uh, that is there. It may look complex, it's not really complex. Uh, but it, what it requires is for all of us to then uh, pull our hands together. Mm -hmm. uh, the public, uh, um, institutions, uh, all of us that we can then be able to then to tackle it. Because at the end of the day, when we're able to then curb money laundering, then we have um, legitimate businesses competing, you have more money than coming back to the country. And we have people then um, really getting what they deserve in terms of yeah. earning their, their, their real KPI. Yeah. There's a lot then to be done, but there's a role for each of us to play. We are the financial reporting center. Uh, we are there to then help other agencies in terms of uh, supporting them mm -hmm. to be able to trace these activities and we'll be able to then uh, um, um, do our role in terms of uh, making sure that we can, as much as possible, Trace the bad guys so that you can be able okay. to put them. Back. How does the public uh, interact with you? How do you how do how do they reach you? Um, we have our um, we're not at, okay. We have our, our yeah. website yeah. uh, www.frc.go.ke yeah. um, where you can be able to reach us. Uh, we don't yet have an online uh, an online platform online presence. We're, yeah. uh, we're in the process of putting that. Yeah. But there's an e an email there. I think it's info at frc.go.ke where you can be able to send us information. 
You can be able to reach us also on our telephone number. I think it's 0709 and send us um, 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 any information. That you may have. Because the public is also, they're considered as one of those that can report to Yes, us. but one of the plans which we have is, um, I'm going yeah. forward, is also to make yeah. our presence a bit more. Because as I said, a lot of people don't know who we are, mm -hmm. what we do. Like we, we, we're a financial intelligence yeah. agency. Yeah. There are pros and cons to it because yeah. we're supposed to be just be below the radar. Yeah. Uh, but also it's good for the public to know uh, that we exist yes. and what we are there for. Yeah. And we'll be doing a lot of outreach yeah. um, um, in the in days to come. come there. Yeah. Uh, what is your part in short? Thank you so much. I am not good in Oswayo, as uh, you may say it, mm. but thank you so much. Uh, the it's public, we, we do this to sensitize people okay. about the law. Like I, when somebody asks, why should I know about the system? And of course now you know why you should know about the system. And I believe people now should know why they know about the system. We get to interact with people a lot because they ask questions and they get the questions answered too. So like empowerment, knowledge is power. If you know, then you don't get snookers, you know, you don't get uh, on the wrong side of the law of half the time. So I want to thank you so much again for coming. Thank you so much, James, for gracing our studio, our nice okay. studio. <laughs> And Bakesha as well. Uh, thank you so much for the insight. I believe we've learned a lot about uh, money laundering. It's still very topical, as you can imagine, because people are into quick money, making, uh, getting rich schemes. It's the thing. You see your pastor getting rich overnight. You see your, your colleague, you see your classmates. And it's, it's very luring. You want to. Because poverty doesn't allow us to say no. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I watched a video on YouTube the other day, and the title was actually the youth were saying we want to wash wash. They want to take part, mm -hmm. and the the interviewer was talking to youth who are in the informal settlements. We want to pick a chapo, makanga, we want to use smoky, and we just keep at a chance. Ugafanya, someone says, "Ay, mi naenda, mi ni pesa." You get so there's a lot of um uh, we need to look at our health the societal values we have what you are teaching the young people and ex exactly what they need to it's not in they need to know it's not all instant so uh, guys i want to come to the end of the broadcast the show today it's been quite enlightening at least for me and i hope it has been for you and of course from the comments you can see it's been quite a topic for everyone let's keep talking about it so when you go opening an account and the bank says kyc it's not a marketing gimmick is it it's <laughs> it is one of the anti-money anti laundering measures when the empresa lady in your hood asks you for their i for your id again and she's also just trying to play her part in in uh, in stopping the vice from 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 growing as it is so to watch etama let us just work hard for whatever money uh, for our money and of course live within our means those those things come to an end somehow at whatever stage the three stages we told about utapatikana tubado and of course you can reach out to the odpp and of course the frc if you see anything you need to report about any uh, any of these illegal activities that you see you may see going on around in your area once again i want to thank you for joining us i want to thank you for engaging with us on social media we are still there on Twitter and on uh, Facebook and uh, YouTube. You're welcome to subscribe. You're welcome to invite your friends and, uh, and your colleagues to definitely join us, join us in the conversation. It actually makes it very nice when we have people engaging with us like this. Then the, discussions is, the discussion is rich and then and becomes even more enlightening. There are some things you ask on your comments and we maybe while we have not even talked about it, then you also get enlightened. So I want to wish you a very good Friday. I want to wish you an awesome weekend. And let's catch up next week and see what topic we'll be discussing uh, in the coming days. Have a blessed day ahead. Thank you so much. <laughs>